Kia ora koutou, haere mai, ke te ope whakaora. It's great to be able to join together around God's Word. And we're going to go to Acts chapter 2. If you've got your Bibles, I encourage you just wherever you are, just to grab God's Word and look up Acts chapter 2. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Robert Adams, and together with my wife Susan, we're the core officers, the leaders at uh, Johnson Bull Salvation Army. It's just a privilege to be able to um, share God's word with you today. So Acts chapter 2. It's Pentecost Sunday, and, and I love Pentecost Sunday because it's where we get to just really focus on the Holy Spirit. And, and one of the things that I really love is just seeing the Spirit of God working in people's lives, seeing them having tangible, real uh, encounters, powerful encounters uh, with the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is about changing lives, transforming lives. And I had the privilege just earlier this week to be with a guy who was really struggling uh, in his own uh, life, things going on, and, and I was talking to him about Jesus and had the privilege of, of leading him to Jesus. He gave his life to the Lord. And you know, that's the greatest miracle, is the miracle of salvation, the miracle of coming to faith in God. And, and uh, when we finished uh, praying for him to come to faith, I, I said to him, it'd be, be great to pray for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I just explained a little bit about what that meant. And he said, yeah, yeah, okay. And so so we prayed. I said, just hold your hands out in front of you like this, and, and I'll pray. And I prayed for him to be filled with the Holy Spirit that day. And, and it was incredible. The Spirit of God just came into the room, came up on this man's life. And, and, and uh, you know, and it was just a powerful moment for him. And when we finished praying, I said to him, you grab, grab a notebook, write this down. Write down what's happened today, that this was the day you came to faith, that you became a child of God, that you received the free gift of eternal life. This was the day where God showed up in power in your life. Write it down so that as you go through life, because you know there's going to be ups and downs, there's going to be times where, where, where doubts will come, uncertainties will come, that you can anchor yourself to this moment where, where God showed up in your life and, and let that be a stake in the ground moment. You see, the Holy Spirit is he's in the business of changing and transforming lives. You know, if, you wanna, if you're wondering what is the Holy Spirit doing right now, well, one thing is for sure is that He's transforming people from glory to glory to become more like Jesus. He is changing people more and more into the image of Christ. That is for sure. He, you know, here's the thing. See, the Holy Spirit, about the Holy Spirit, everything the Holy Spirit touches is changed for the better. Come on, someone should be writing amen in the chat room right now. That's a good point. Everything the Holy Spirit touches is changed for the better. He just makes things better. He makes things better. And, you know, uh, I just, uh, you know, the, there is a catch to this, though. He makes things better, but he will only change what we give him access to. We've got to open the door. We've got to say yes to him. We've got to allow him into our life and say, have your way in my life. But he will make things better. He will make things better. And there is always more of the Holy Spirit to experience. There's always more. He is never done with work in our life. I want to talk today uh, about being filled with the Holy Spirit. Being filled with the Holy Spirit. And ask a question as we begin. And this is the question. How hungry are you today to be filled with the Spirit? How hungry are you today to be filled with the Spirit? You see, hunger is the great motivator. Um, I've got teenage children in the house, and, and if you've got teenage children in your house, you'll understand this, is that they spend a lot of time in their room. They're in their room. And, uh, you know, there are certain things that will cause them to emerge from their room. Uh, one of those things is if you turn the Wi-Fi off. If you turn the Wi-Fi off, all of a sudden they appear. What's going on? And it's good to know that they're still alive in that moment. Um, the other thing that will cause them to emerge is hunger. When they start getting hunger, they will appear out of their room and they'll ask what's for dinner or they'll find their way to the refrigerator or the pantry because hunger is the great motivator. It is the thing that will cause you to hop in your car and drive to KFC and wait in the drive through line for a couple of hours. Hunger motivates. And so the question today is how hungry, this Pentecost Sunday, how hungry are we to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Um, just before we get to our passage in Acts chapter 2, there's one thing that I, I really want to share which kind of set me free a little bit in my understanding about being filled with the Holy Spirit. Being filled with the Spirit is not a one-off event. It's not a one-off experience. You see, we've got to understand this. The same group of people that were together in Acts chapter 2, 
who were filled with the Spirit, they were gathered together again in Acts chapter 4. And guess what? They were filled with the Spirit. It is not a one-off experience. Paul says in Ephesians 5 verse 18, don't get drunk on wine. It will ruin you. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. And the word filled there is, is a sense of a progressive, continued posture and positioning to be filled. It's not a one-off experience. And so how hungry today are we to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Let's go to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, we're just going to walk our way through these first uh, uh, four verses of the chapter. Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. It says, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place, they being the believers. When the day of Pentecost came. So what is Pentecost? What is the day of Pentecost? Pentecost was a Jewish religious festival where they celebrated the first fruits of the wheat harvest. So, so thousands of people from all over the known world would come together. They would, they'd book their annual leave. They, you know, they'd taken time off work. They'd packed the car and they were excited. They're traveling to Jerusalem because they're coming for this festival called Pentecost. And so they arrive, thousands. This, the population of Jerusalem was inflated with all these people who'd come for this festival. But at the same time, this, the, the thousands were gathered and celebrating the festival. There was another group of people, much smaller group, 120, whose focus was different. They weren't there to celebrate the, the religious festival. They weren't there to join in all the, the, uh, you know, the, the Pentecost celebrations. No, their focus was to wait, to be clothed with power from high. They were there to ready and waiting to be filled with the Holy Spirit. There was a hunger in them to experience the promised gift of God's Spirit. Jesus had told them to wait. Wait in Jerusalem, he said in Acts chapter 1, verse 4, until you receive the promised gift. Now that word wait, we've got to understand what that means. That's not a picture. They weren't kicked back in their recliner chairs, uh, you know, uh, with their feet up, orange juice in one hand, remote in the other, watching Netflix, you know, they, you know, what are you, guys, what are you doing? Well, I'm just waiting for the Holy Spirit. No, that wasn't the sense of waiting. The word waiting there in the Greek means the sense of anticipation, that every part of who they were was poised, ready, hungry, longing to receive the Spirit of God, to be filled with the Spirit. You see, while everyone else is celebrating, they are waiting. They're waiting, hungry to be filled with the Spirit. They didn't know that this would be the day it was going to happen. You see, that it was 10 days earlier that Jesus said to wait. And so they've been waiting for 10 days. And, and, you know, this day was just another day. They got up this morning and saying, you know, could it be today? Could it be today? And uh, so they didn't know. They didn't put on their Sunday best thing. Today's the day. We're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. They didn't know. But in Acts chapter 2 and verse 2, it says, Suddenly, this day, suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Look at this sensory progression here. First of all, they heard something. They heard a sound of the Holy Spirit at work. Then they saw something. They saw the sign of the Holy Spirit at work. But then they experienced His infilling. They experienced Him for themselves. You see, so often in life, we, we do that, don't we? We, we hear about the Holy Spirit at work. We hear what He's doing. And then, you know, then we might see Him at work. We see the Holy Spirit at work in others. But, but some of us stop short of that place where we actually step in and experience Him for ourselves. It's not enough just to hear about what He's doing. It's not enough just to see Him at work. We've got to position ourselves where we would know His presence, know the experience of the filling of the Spirit for ourselves. Are you hungry today to experience that? Suddenly, suddenly, it was like, why did God choose this moment? It's like God, the picture in Acts 2, 33 is of, of, of God the Father passing Jesus, the gift of the Spirit. And then Jesus is waiting for God to say, now's the time, now's the time. And then God says, now. And then suddenly, in this moment, the Spirit of God is poured out upon the believers. Why now? Why day 10? Why not 
two days earlier on day eight. Why not on day three? Well, watch this. I don't want you to miss this day. This is key. Acts chapter two, verse one. It says, some translations say, when the day of Pentecost was fully come. What does that mean? This was the peak of the Pentecost celebrations, the festivities. Everyone was in town. The city was a hive of activity, buzzing with excitement and celebration. If there was going to be a day that would test their focus, their hunger to be filled with the Spirit, it would be this day. There was so much going on in Jerusalem. You know, they could have said, let's take a break. You know, let's go check out what's happening down the road. Let's have a look at this. There's so much going on. But they remained focused. They remained together, focused, hungry for the Holy Spirit. Even in the midst of all the religious activity, you know, good religious, proper, important religious activity, they hungered for something different. They hungered for a new move of the Spirit of God in their lives. God saw that nothing was going to take their focus off waiting for the promised gift of the Holy Spirit, of being filled with His presence. Their hearts were right. Their focus was right. They hungered for nothing else but His presence. Being filled with the Holy Spirit was the most important thing for them. There was unity in their desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so God, in that moment, He says, now, and then suddenly, suddenly, they're all filled in, verse, in chapter 2, verse 4, it says, All of them were full, filled with the Holy Spirit. All of them. No one missed out in that moment. No one missed out that day. In Acts 2, 17, when Peter gets up to explain what's going on, he says, he quotes the prophet Joel, and he says, In those days, God will pour out His Spirit on all people. See, God's desire is that no one would miss out on knowing His presence, knowing the infilling of the Holy Spirit. How hungry are you and I today? Of course, we can't all be together physically like they were back then. We can't all be together in one place right now. But wherever we are, whoever we're with, our hearts can be united in this pursuit and this hunger to be filled with the Holy Spirit. See, we are te ope whakaora. We are the army that brings life. And here's something we need to know is that the life that we bring to others it cannot be about what we do in our own strength. It must not be about what we can do in our own strength. It must be about the Holy Spirit working in us and overflowing from us. The Spirit of God must be the source of life when we're thinking about the army that brings life. Being filled with the Holy Spirit was the most important thing to them. He must be. He must be the most important thing for us today. It's not by might nor by power, but only by a spirit, says the Lord. So in a moment, I want to pray. I'm going to pray that here today that we would know the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Wherever you are, uh, whoever you're with, you might be sitting in the lounge with family or friends. You might have gathered with a few others. You might be lying in bed with your, your smartphone. Wherever you are, we can have this united desire to be filled afresh, maybe filled for the very first time, to know and experience the Holy Spirit's presence. So why don't you join with me together now as we pray. I encourage you, you know, you don't need to see me in this moment. You can close your eyes as long as you can hear the prayer. But let's pray together wherever you are and let's invite the Holy Spirit to come into our life right now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, right now, we thank you for the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Your word says that it, the promise is for everyone, everyone, that you would want no one would miss out on the experience of being filled with your Spirit. And right now, God, you see every hungry heart. You see the desires of people who have, who, who have opened their heart, who are saying yes to you, who are, who are wanting to allow you to come into their world, into their life right now. I pray, Spirit of God, fill these people. In Jesus' name, pour out your Spirit in a powerful way that, that from this moment, people will get up from this moment and their life will be changed. It'll be changed for the better because your Holy Spirit is filling them right now. Whoever's listening, whoever's heart is open now, fill them, I pray, just like you did all those years ago. And I pray that now in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. I want you to continue to posture and position yourself to be to allow the Holy Spirit to move in your life. Right now, as the music team comes, they're going to sing a song where we're going to invite the Spirit to fall afresh. And I, and I just want you to, to receive Him. You know, like wherever you are, just allow the Spirit of God to come and minister to you, fill you afresh this day. God bless you.